Several months ago, our lab was contacted by a local elementary school student who was doing a research project on the current state of cystic fibrosis, or CF, research. As it turned out, this student had CF himself, and he wanted to know whether, why there wasn't currently a cure for CF and whether we'd be able to develop one soon. Now, I was deeply moved by this interaction. How do you tell anyone, especially a, a young child who's suffering from a serious genetic disease that despite decades of work, we still don't have a cure for CF? Now, don't get me wrong, we've made a lot of progress. When CF was first classified back in the 1930s, the life expectancy was only a couple months. Now, however, CF patients can live into their mid-40s. So we, we've made a lot of progress. It's really great improvements that we've made. But the problem is that CF is a complex disease. There's still a lot about it that we don't understand, and this makes it difficult to develop a cure. So what do we currently know about CF? So CF, as I mentioned, is a lethal genetic disease. And what I have pictured here are two different airways. So the first on the top is a normal airway. This is, it's nice and open, it's clear, air can flow through, you can breathe just fine. But on the bottom, I have an airway with cystic fibrosis. So here, the epithelial cells, which are the cells that are lining the respiratory tract, have this thick, sticky mucus that builds up on top of them. This mucus not only constricts the airways and makes it thicker to breathe, makes it harder to breathe, <laughs> um, it also is a really great environment for bacteria to infect. So bacteria will infect the CF patients, they'll get stuck in that mucus, and they'll grow and divide. And so CF patients tend to suffer from recurrent bacterial infections. These bacterial infections also lead to cro chronic inflammation, which further damages the lungs and further causes problems with lung function. Now, for a long time, it was thought that this mucus, the presence of this mucus alone was enough to prompt these infections and inflammation. Researchers were stuck on the sticky mucus hypothesis. However, what our lab has shown in the past couple years is that the immune system is also dysfunctional in CF, specifically macrophages, and that this contributes to the infection and inflammation phenotype. So what do macrophages do? Macrophages are a key part of the immune system that patrol the body and they help clear out infections. So what I have pictured here is a macrophage, that's the big blue cell, and some little bacteria that are in orange. So what happens is the macrophages, when they see a, a bacterium, they'll come around and they'll, they'll engulf the bacteria and pull it into the cell. The bacteria is now in a compartment inside that cell. The bacterial compartment will then fuse with another compartment called the lysosome, which contains a lot of degradative enzymes. When that comes into contact with the bacteria, it destroys it and the bacteria is eliminated. However, in the case of CF, there's a problem with this process. So the, the macrophages can take up the bacteria, but they can't destroy it. And so this leads to chronic infection. Now, this is, this is the end point. We see that, that CF macrophages are dysfunctional in clearing out bacterial infections. The question now is, why is that the case? To understand that, we need to know, first, how do macrophages respond to infection? How do they prepare to, to have this response? So it turns out, it's a, at, at its core, this process involves a change in the way that macrophages produce and utilize energy. What produces energy in the cell? An organelle I'm sure you're all familiar with, the mitochondria. The mitochondria are, a, as you've probably learned back in high school, maybe in middle school, are the, the energy powerhouse of the cell. They produce energy that the cell then uses to go and do everything else that it needs to do. But what we've become, begun to appreciate over the past, past couple of years is that mitochondria can do so much more than that. They're not only the immune powerhouse of the cell, but also, they're not only the energy powerhouse of the cell, but the immune powerhouse, powerhouse of the cell as well. Mitochondria are key to helping shield the body from infection. In the case of macrophages, what the mitochondria do is they change the way that they, they produce energy so that the macrophages become pro-inflammatory, and these inflammatory macrophages can produce products that they'll use to uh, fight back an infection. At this point, I've mentioned three different things. I've mentioned cystic fibrosis, I've mentioned mitochondria, I've mentioned macrophages. You may be asking yourself, what's the connection between these three things? So it turns out, previous work from other labs has shown that mitochondria are defective in CF epithelial cells. These are the cells that I mentioned line the respiratory tract. The question is, this is true for epithelial cells, is it also true for macrophages? So we know that mitochondrial function regulates macrophage function, and so does this mean that dysfunctional mitochondria cause dysfunctional macrophages? This is the goal of my project, 
My hypothesis is that mitochondria are dysfunctional in CF macrophages and that this contributes to CF macrophage dysfunction. To begin my project, I've been focusing on the first part of that statement, that mitochondria are dysfunctional in CF macrophages. And to do this, I've been looking at mitochondrial function in both healthy macrophages and CF macrophages and comparing to see if there is a difference. To do this, I've been putting the macrophages through a stress test. And stress tests, you may be familiar with, maybe some of you have undergone one, in terms of a stress tests for organs such as your heart. Your doctor asks you to, to walk or, or run on a treadmill to stress your heart and make it work harder so that the data from that experiment can tell how well your, your heart is working. I did the same thing, but with mitochondria. So I took my healthy and my, my CF macrophages, I added compounds to them to stress the mitochondria and make them work hard so that I could see how well they were functioning. And my preliminary data shows some interesting results. The, what they seem to be suggesting so far is that CF mitochondria are not as fit as healthy mitochondria. And there were two observations that led to this, to this conclusion. First, I saw that mitochondria have a lower, the CF mitochondria have a lower maximal respiration. Maximal respiration, as it sounds, refers to the highest rate at which the mitochondria work. How hard can they work when they're stressed? And I saw that this was lower for CF mitochondria compared to wild-type mitochondria. Related to this, I also saw that CF mitochondria have a decreased ability to respond to an energetic stress. So the way I assessed this was by looking at where the mitochondria were functioning before I stressed them versus where they were functioning after I stressed them. For wild-type mitochondria, there's, there's quite a gap there, which means that the mitochondria have a lot of space to move around and increase their function to respond to uh, some type of stress. With the CF mitochondria, however, they're operating closer to that maximum respiration, so there's not a lot of wiggle room there. What that means, then, is if you have wild-type healthy mitochondria and CF mitochondria and you add a stress to them, the wild-type mitochondria can respond to that stress, but the CF mitochondria might not be able to do that. They might become overwhelmed. So this has led to what I uh, have up there, is that CF mitochondria are not as fit as healthy mitochondria. They're not working, they're not able to, to work as well as the healthy mitochondria. This is really interesting data, because it's the first, time, first evidence to show that mitochondrial dysfunction may also exist in CF macrophages. And this is important because with this, this forms the groundwork, which with further experimentation can show the link between mitochondria and the lung phenotype in CF. Unfit mitochondria cause dysfunctional macrophages, which can lead then to the CF phenotype of infection and inflammation that we see in the lungs of CF patients. So what have we learned? What has my project added to the field of CF research? As I mentioned, CF is a complex disease, and the previous approach of focusing only on one specific aspect of that disease, the sticky mucus hypothesis, limits our understanding of this, this very complex disease. By focusing, by looking at other aspects of the disease, such as the role of mitochondria and macrophages, this opens up the possibility, opens up not only our understanding of this disease, but also the possibilities for treatments that can be developed. In the case of mitochondria, for instance, if we can fix the mitochondria, this may fix the, the macrophages, and this could be an alternative treatment to the multi-drug resistant infections that CF patients suffer from. Instead of trying to find another antibiotic to treat these bacteria with, we can promote the, the patient's own immune system, their own cells, to be able to better respond to this infection. Now, getting back to that, that student I mentioned at the beginning of my talk, what would I tell him now? I would tell him that this is a really exciting time to be involved in CF research. We're expanding our, field, expanding our field of understanding to learn more and more about this disease, and this brings us closer to the goal of a cure. Thank you.